This feels like the valley after the peak. I mean, after all of that, right? I mean, he was so hyped up about that game, and the Cowboys started off charging, man. Like, did he even stay away for the whole game to realize how terribly it ended? I hope he had an IV. He just must have been dehydrated after all of that. You know, one of those conditions where you obviously were super liquidated, yeah. and then... Or perhaps he and Will Kane hugged it out and Ooh. said it'll be better later. I Cowboys like, fan. I feel like Will would appreciate the sweat imprint left by Michael Irvin. Will would be that guy. And I say that as a compliment. First name, the Cowboys. Because the Cowboys did lose to the Titans 28 to 14 last night, falling to three and five on the year. Today, Troy Aikman said the organization is dysfunctional and needs a complete overhaul. But Jerry Jones says Jason Garrett will not be fired and that Dak Prescott will be extended. So what do you make of what you saw all last night? All right, first thing, I don't think they're dysfunctional. I just don't think they're good. Like, in watching the game last night, the conclusion that I came away with from was they're just not that good. Yeah. They've got some good players. Like, Demarcus Lawrence made it clear early. He is a very good player. He is a very good player who is not on a very good team because that ain't a very good team that they played against, and that ain't a very good quarterback that was on the other side. And the Titans look like the better team that had the better quarterback. Heading into this game, they did everything it seemed possible but fired. Jason Garrett. It was a bye week. They changed offensive line coaches. Michael Irvin obviously entered that weird fugue state. People were optimistic that the practices, Dak Prescott was talking about the practices being chippy before this game. And then after this game, we are all left with the same question that they ask after every game, which is, when will Jerry Jones make a move? And for people who are waiting, Bo, Jerry Jones has only fired one coach midseason. That was Wade Phillips after starting off 1-7 in 2010, and then he brought in Jason Garrett. That's the only time since 89 that it even happened. Yeah, I mean, the thing is this, though. What would be helped by changing the coach right now? They need a new coach. The time to fire Jason yes. Garrett was before the season. Maybe, the, maybe before the season before that. Maybe before the season <laughs> before that. Like There have been plenty of other times to do it. I don't feel like this is going to be a thing that's going to shake this team up and get them into the playoffs, which would be a staggering indictment of this team because they are in a winnable division. They, they are. should be able to win this. This isn't that difficult to do. Washington is on top of that division. If you saw them play last week, you would not think that that was a team that was on top of a division. So I don't know what they're supposed to do in the short term but saying right now that Dak Prescott is going to get an extension I'm curious to know what the plan is next year maybe you do decide this is what you're going to do but I don't feel like you got enough to say this is our guy for the long term maybe you give him another year on his deal yeah nobody should feel great about that this season Dak Prescott has had four lost fumbles I believe in eight games which is a bad sign and also that interception he tried to force into Amari Cooper you know but at the same time it ain't like he got a lot around him other than Zeke, who maybe they should have kept giving the ball to. Yeah, second half, that Just would have been thought. helpful. His name is Jamal Murray. The Nuggets guard went off for 48 points last night, but it was an attempt to reach 50-plus with seconds remaining that bothered the Celtics, mm. particularly Kyrie Irving. Let's so watch how it ended. Nuggets are good, by the way. They are. There we go. Here we go. Last play of the game. End of the game. You know, dribbling it out, dribbling it out. Celtics have obviously committed to doing nothing. And then Jamal Murray put up a shot <laughs> at the end, and that made people mad. Jamal Murray can't understand what the problem is. Apparently, that's no big deal in Canada. I've learned in recent years, NBA oh! players really don't like it. Kyrie Irving did that. Yeah, got air on Thomas, that. Who I'm sure loves living in Denver. He's just posted up over there. As he should. Uh, didn't Marcus Smart want to smoke? By the way, here's Kyrie after the game Ooh. being asked about it. Yeah, because he was sour. Three, going for that three in the last second that Bobby Wall. I mean, what kind of competitor wouldn't it bother? You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, but the ball deserves to go in the crowd after <laughs> like that. So, do it in the crowd. What the hell the ball do to deserve that? I am in favor of balls being liberally chucked into crowds as a matter of, like, party favors, Bo. But let's be clear about what happened here. They did not want him to get 50. Fair enough. But the way they played this, it was actually kind of inadvertently brilliant because the guy didn't get 50, and instead, Jamal Murray, after this game, started talking about how emotions got a hold of him, and yeah, he was trying to get the 50 because everyone was yelling about it, and how he basically apologized. And so the end of this game went from, ooh, this guy may score 40, uh, 50 on us, to a thing of, 
oh, this guy is now contrite at the altar of basketball's unwritten rules. Yeah, I, I say I did not realize until very recently that basketball players cared this much I about the shot at the end of the game. I, I did not know. I understand <laughs> where they are coming from because I'd be sure. salty too. Like the one thing we have to say is if we tell Kyrie, if you don't like it, stop him. Yeah, that's cool. But all of us would be salty if you already put 48 on us. We're already losing. And now you're trying to throw a little extra on there. We'd all be there. We'd all be mad. But just because you mad doesn't mean somebody shouldn't do something. That is not the absolute standard for whether or not a behavior is allowed. That's where they lose me on this one. Yes. And the other thing is, it is kind of a checkmate move because if we don't try, that means that you're not allowed to try. And that he really wanted to try. Yeah, but you know, did he? He didn't even really want to try at first. Like, obviously, he's just there bouncing the ball and around. Then the, peer then the people got, got on to him, and he's like, "Okay, let me do it for the people. How about that, Kyrie? Why don't you let these people do it for the people? Or are you anti-fan? Because it sounds to me like he is against the people that pay his salary." And in fact, the Celtics should be concerned about the fans, specifically those in Boston, because they are the second worst offense in the league right now. They're the worst in terms of getting to the rim, second worst in free throw rate. Brad Stevens allegedly coaches this team. By the way, their point guard doesn't make people better and never has. Ooh, next name, Joe Flacco. After losing four of their last five, Ravens coach John Harbaugh was asked if it's time to start Lamar Jackson. And he said, quote, Joe's played well, so I don't want to get into all of that. He's getting better as a quarterback, an NFL quarterback, all the time. End quote. But would it be in Harbaugh's best interest, though, to bench Flacco? Look, man, Joe Flacco's had that job for so long that he has lowered the standard of what well is in the mind of John Harbaugh. Joe Flacco has not averaged seven yards per attempt since 2014. Ooh. Joe Flacco this season has had all of two games where he averaged seven yards an attempt. In the two seasons prior to this one, Joe Flacco did not average 10 yards per completion. Dang. If you want to know the answer <laughs> to how far you can ride out the goodwill of a Super Bowl win, Joe Flacco gives it to you every single game. Now, most quarterbacks, if they would have performed the way that Joe Flacco had in the previous three years and coming into this year, there'd be a lot more clamoring for bringing in the backup quarterback. Let's just see what we got. But A, the Ravens are fairly close to maybe making the playoffs and Joe Flacco was grandfathered in by that one great month that he had. And as a result, Rain. Lamar Jackson still sits on the bench. I don't even know if Lamar Jackson is ready, but I know this. He's readier than Josh Allen was at the start of the year. And they traded a dude who had made a Pro Bowl to make space for that catch. No, you raise a variety of good points. But here is the thing about Lamar Jackson and why John Harbaugh is misplaying this. People are watching John Harbaugh slow cook Lamar Jackson. And meanwhile, they're just gnawing on the bone that is Joe Flacco. The dude is, yeah, 29th in passer rating, 29th in terms of yards, 20-yard uh, field, downfield passes. All of these stats that indicate, man, the guy isn't that good, they're all there. Lamar Jackson, if you're going to start him, do it now because the next five games, as Bill Barnwell points out, all against defensive DVOA teams that are real bad. Yeah, also, big arm Joe Flacco never actually yeah, where throws is the, the ball arm? down there. The arm is being wasted or something. I don't know. Next name is Eli Manning. Giants announced that Eli will start this week against the 49ers, and their backup quarterback Kyle Lawletta will not be suspended for his traffic Ooh. arrest, where he allegedly almost hit a cop with his car. Hmm. Pablo, were you more surprised that Eli is still starting or that Lawletta won't be suspended? I don't think I'm surprised by any of this, and I say that because Kyle Lawletta getting away with this, so to speak, not getting in trouble with the highest levels of the organization, of the sport. Yeah, that's kind of how life has probably gone for Kyle Lawletta. But Eli Manning, man, I do think they agree that Eli has to go. It's simply that because Kyle Lawletta got in trouble, the best case scenario is let's just make sure it's quiet on the Kyle Lawletta front. And then down the road, we'll get Eli out of there. But you just can't do that right now well, because of the cop thing. Well, one thing, I'm not surprised that Eli is going to start. I would not be surprised if Eli started for the rest of the season because I do not believe that Kyle Lawletta was drafted to take Eli Manning's job. In fact, they seem to have a depth chart that's built around the number one qualification that you could not take Eli Manning's job. People just don't want Eli to play. They're very right, afraid right. of yeah, yeah, yeah. calling yeah, for yeah, that. Yeah. So there's maybe a chance this guy becomes a starter, but I'm not guaranteeing that it's going to happen. The thing about him not being suspended, what yeah. I don't understand about this is 
Why is this even the Giants' call? I thought there was a personal conduct policy in place in the NFL for moments like this. Moments like when you are alleged to have tried to hit a police officer with your car. Now, apparently the story was he was running late to practice. Yes, very yes, late. He could go some other way, and he decided to mash out and go. Who knows? Maybe his coaches saw that and were like, you know what? That's a guy that's dedicated to getting here. You know how afraid I would be of getting smoked if that thing happened to me? And by the way, if I got arrested and I didn't come out of there looking like I did when I went in, you know what people say to me? You shouldn't be running away from the cops in your car. What do they say? I think he's a good kid. Well, that's that's it. And route management turns out not a great strength of Kyle Lalletta. But Bo, if you're the Giants, do you have to take a look at like, I don't know, Sam Bradford? Do you take a look at anyone else? Because Kyle Lalletta cannot be the yeah. guy. You can't go get out the street to go replace Eli Manning though. Uh, coming up next, who says Matt Stafford might be overpaid? We'll talk about it. Hello, kids. High Noon is brought to you by ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. That dude really did, like, run away from the cops and then get to work and be like, nah, I can explain. And they were like, yeah, good enough for me. Yeah, there was a big traffic jam. What if he had gotten to work and the cops showed up at work? So it is dedication. That's, That's how right. bad I want to be here. Mm -hmm. First quote. The guy is overpaid. He's a stat king. He picks up a lot of yards and production in garbage time. Said 2002 NFL MVP Rich Gannon about Matt Stafford yesterday. Gannon also said Stafford is the reason the Lions aren't better. Bo, is Gannon going a bit too far here? I mean, we pulled up his stats for first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter in the last couple years, and I didn't really understand what it was that Rich Gannon was talking about. Now, the Lions do seem to attempt a lot more passes in the second and fourth quarters, but that stat padding part, not so much. Overpay, I don't really like to get into that because it's not my money, but... Stafford is a pretty good quarterback. He has always been a pretty good quarterback. I haven't seen much to indicate better than pretty good quarterback. I'll give you overrated, but I wouldn't go as far as he said. Yeah, the market determines what you are worth. That is how you get paid. There is no over or underpaid from that philosophical perspective. But, Bo, I have sympathy for Matt Stafford because it does not help when you are sacked 10 times as he was behind an offensive line that is porous. It does not help when you trade away Golden Tate, arguably your best receiver. It does not help when your head coach is frat bro Santa Claus and your signals apparently get stolen multiple times in a season. Matt Stafford is not by any means a top, top tier quarterback, but the Lions have so many other things going wrong that it's hard for me to say, you, that is your fault. Yeah, well, they've never given them a running game, right? Like, that's the, that's the one thing about this. They've never made a real concerted effort to run the ball. They've said, we're going to ask you to throw the ball at some points well over 700 times a season in order to get this done. That being said, he has skated from the level of pressure that you would ordinarily receive for being a number one overall pick. What's that? Look, guys, this is year 11 for him. Year 11. They've been in the playoffs three times. I don't believe they've won any of those games since they've gotten there. Most guys under that situation got to live with a lot more of a burden that he has. He's not the only person to have been taken number one overall in the draft and not been given support that's around him. He does get to skate. Not so much from people in Detroit, but from people outside. Yes, and he's making all that money, and it's hard to build around a team yeah. like that when... Hey, yeah. It sounds like you pocket watching, though. Next quote. Mm. You don't know his situation. He's still not healthy. <laughs> Tweeted Drew Hanlon about Markel Fultz after hearing criticism of this sad three-point attempt Fultz had Sunday. Let's watch what everyone was reacting to. Up front, charge and beat. Man, we hard and on the young fella. Yes, fronting and this is not going to do anything to help that. Because that's yeah, that's not. That's wow. We sped it up just to show it to you <laughs> in slow motion. Just to show that he missed yeah. all of the. Dang, we gonna do it basket. again, huh? Ooh. Yikes. Is that it? Are you guys done? Caught, caught some net there. All right, yeah, then, all right, nice we finished it. Pablo, you think Fultz is healthy? Oh, wow, they're not done. Sorry. They are not done. I don't think he is healthy, Bo, but it's what health means that's at issue here. Because Drew Hanlon, the trainer in question, went on a podcast months ago and said the term that I assume Markel Fultz never wanted said out loud, which is yips. Part of health is the, is the mind. And so right now, I think you have an issue where people cannot be clear about what's actually ailing Markel Fultz, which is a combination, at the very least, of body and mind. Because they tried that once, and 
clearly he never wanted to spoke of again. Yeah, you know, you are right that maybe what this trainer is talking about is his mind, although the trainer does not work in that department, at least as far as I can tell. That's where I'm confused here. If there is some other injury, okay, go ahead and let us know. Yeah, but he said he's still not healthy. You correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the trainer that stays putting these dudes on Instagram all That's right. along with these videos to show you what they're doing. If he's healthy, or, he, or I have the impression that he's healthy, but he's really not, guess whose fault that partially is? Yes. The dude that's here telling me right now that he's not healthy, right? So, like, don't put him on the Instagram all summer if he's going to come back here and be like, he's still not healthy. I don't know what is going on with him. I don't have any answer whatsoever, but I've never been more confused about a number one overall pick in his second year than I am now. The problem with putting out workout propaganda is that some people may actually believe that it is real. Last quote. Cleveland is the only job I would consider. Said Bruce Arians about coming out of retirement to coach in the NFL again. What was your reaction to hearing that? You didn't retire, you quit your job, right? <laughs> the, the team that you coached last year mm -hmm. looks all kinds of awful this year. I don't blame you for quitting your job because you didn't want to coach them anymore. But if you are so willing to come back to the league that you are willing to coach the Cleveland Browns, I don't care where you are from. I don't care what your roots are. We have seen the level of dysfunction that that organization has. For you to be like, I'll come out of retirement for this, you're not retired right now, Bruce. You're just taking a break. Everybody across sports needs to stop using the word retire as often as we do. Boxers, right? Bruce Arians is basically a boxer who says, I'm done with the game unless there is something that's really interesting to me. And what's conspicuous about this bow is that Bruce Arians is that guy who's saying, you know, I want to date someone, but I'm only going to date the person who's super desperate right now. And that mostly makes it seem like you, Bruce Arians, are yourself kind of desperate. Because who else would want that job? Well, to be fair, is he even desperate at this point, though? That's just the job that's open. Right, like, like, yes, that, for like any that, job, right, I guess. like that is the one that we are aware of. He wouldn't have to be a guy that we would think would have to be desperate. He was pretty good at the job the last time we saw yes, it. I just can't, guru. I just can't imagine loving nothing so much that I want to go do it for the Cleveland Browns. If right now I'm chilling at the crib and I already got my bread, that that is me. I I don't have an Bruce answer. Bruce Arians wants yeah, what they uh, got. Coming up next, Kentucky and Duke. We'll get Ooh. you ready for it. Yes. Download this show as a podcast. Bomani's too. Check out mine too. If you can figure out who I am. Carmichael. Well, I tell you, it is only a matter of time for the six Philadelphia fans forget they're supposed to be nice to Markel Fultz and they just go back to being how they are. He is so miserable. It's palpable. Everyone can tell Bo, and he's not the only guy who can't shoot on that team right now, by the way. Today's number 1.5. That's how many points Kentucky is favored by over Duke tonight. Which team do you expect more from this year? I mean, it's hard not to make the case that you expect more from Duke, right? When they, three of the top four players in America went to Duke this year. Yep. They all kind of sort of play the same position, though. Not mm. the exact same position. And then that takes us to Kentucky, which has, by the way, an incredible class that's coming in. It just doesn't have three of the top four. Cal wanted Zion Williamson. He was not able to get him. My guess is this, though. Cal has demonstrated to me more experience in playing this one-and-done game and trying to cobble together a team on the fly. And he typically gets better defensive teams in this way. I would expect more from Kentucky, but Duke's got a lot, man. I'm leaning Duke just because Coach K, it's funny to point this out, but he has mastered the one-and-done game in ways not seen since John Calipari. Four of the last five recruiting classes, it's been Duke 1, Kentucky 2. And I remember being a young reporter covering NCAA tournaments, and reporters would be in the locker room with, like, angry probing questions for Coach Cal about about degrading the college experience, and now Mr. College Experience is just doing this game as well as anybody has. Well, here's where I disagree with you about his mastery of the game. Hmm. He has mastered the game of getting them on campus, right? Now, they won that championship in 2015, so I don't want to pretend like this has never worked. That's right. They got knocked out of the second round of the tournament on a team that had Jason Tatum, and then Jason Tatum that next year was leading a team to the Eastern Fair Conference point. Finals. That's what's fascinating about this with Duke is that the recruiting classes have gotten better. It's shinier. It gets more mm -hmm. noise. The results, remarkably similar to the previous <laughs> paradigm. Well, and if you have Zion Williamson, what I would say about those guys, the Barretts and the Reddishes and, the, and Williamson, talking to people in the league, they see Williamson in person and they are just staggered because he is just this specimen that we have never seen before. He's not the best player on the team, and though. And that would be crazy. That's where it's interesting. In closing, 
People Magazine put the dude who plays Stringer Bell on the wire on the cover and called him the sexiest man alive. That caught me by surprise. Mm. I didn't know snakes were in the running for that honor. Here we go. I guess snakes need heroes, too. <laughs> so array to all you snakes out there. Pablo, you don't really indulge in the wire. You have not gotten to this point, but you got to understand, man, that's snake right there. I can tell you so many different ways that he's a snake, except he would be spoiled. But you know what? The show been off for 10 years, so I can go ahead and do this. No, I, I don't have I, wisdom teeth surgery, yeah, and yeah, I watched the first great, great. two, it, and it, then it, I... It won't, it won't take anything away from this. I'm just asking you, hypothetically speaking, okay, right? Hypothetically. hypothetically speaking, if a dude went to jail, mm -hmm. and then some dude he used to work with started sleeping with his woman... Oh, that wouldn't be good. And then had him snuffed out oh, in no. jail. You would call that a snake, right? Wait, the dude you would from call, you would call that a snake, right? The dude from Pacific Rim did that. You would call that a snake, right? I just need you to answer me that. You would call that a snake. I would call okay, that okay, snake. Okay, okay. Let me tell you how much a snake this dude is. He's the same dude in every movie, as far as I'm concerned. I ain't got no way of seeing him differently. I loved it in American Gangster when he got yep. shot in the forehead right oh, there on the street. Because that's what happens to snakes. The one time I had a dilemma though on what, what to it? do with him was, there's this movie called Law of Walter Freedom. I don't uh -huh. know if you have seen a long Walter Freedom. It sounds inspirational. Yeah, I'm just saying. I may or may not have done Gotta See Both Sides, and he was Nelson Mandela. Oh, no. Yeah, that's, oh, that's no. he takes me to that place. All I have for you is that a sexy snake is like the basis for the book of Genesis. So, it's a thing. In closing, we are way too numb to real-life scientists telling us that stuff just might be aliens. The latest news comes from two Harvard astronomers who say that the alleged asteroid known as Oumuamua, which zipped past our sun last year, may be a fully operational probe sent intentionally to Earth's vicinity by an alien civilization. Bo, let's take a look at this thing. And this thing is a blunt instrument, and by that I mean this could be a weapon used against Earth, and also, from what I understand, it looks like a blunt. So there is this for America and the planet to contemplate, that this is how the aliens may be doing. I worry about the rest of you less talented people, because I'm sure the aliens will find great value for me. I don't know what the hell purpose y'all going to serve. They're going to give me like a managerial position. You think the aliens are going to pay tribute?